Hey guys, this is Lucas from Better Coding Academy, and in this video, we will be finalizing our code review of this front end demo project we have over here. So, if you remember in the last video, we took a look at Vue Blog and rebuilt it to use use JSON placeholder here. Prior to making this video, I actually realized that we do have one problem with this function, and specifically, it's regarding this bit of code over here. So, if we actually look at our Google Chrome over here, you'll notice that the first author here shows Leanne Graham, and every author after that just shows loading. And the reason for that, if you check the errors is it shows cannot read property data of undefined on line 14 of use JSON placeholder. The reason that we cannot get this data here on line 14 is because this dot then runs after this dot then here and this dot then doesn't return anything. So essentially at this point here, res will be undefined because we're not returning anything from the dot then. So each dot then callback chains onto the one before it and the data being returned by each dot then is then used in the next one. So here what we have to do is instead we should do return res like like this and what this will allow us to do is access the same response again and then do set data res dot data. So now that we've got this, we can save it and you'll notice that this problem is now fixed. So now all of them are showing Lee and Graham at the exact same time because they're all using the same request. So now with this fixed, what we're going to look at in this video is specifically the view user page. Now this one pretty much suffers from the same problem as the rest of the code, which is that we have a big mess of Redux and uh, like a React container and also a React component kind of combined together into this really long string of spaghetti code. So what we're gonna do is really quickly just remove this bottom part here, which really only does the fetching. So because of the amount of stuff going on here, you notice that we also do use blog lists in order to fetch the blog posts for the user. So for example, for Leanne Graham, we've got the user details over here and the blog list over here on the right. So what we actually should do in this case is because there's so much going on, I actually think it might make more sense to do a quick refactor and create a component inside of here. So then the view user we can actually use as the container in this sense. And then we can also use user details, which is situated inside of here specifically to render the user. So we're going to do that here, create a new file and call it user details uh, .js inside of the folder with the same name. So we're going to do something like this really quickly and also put in a new file called index.js like that. So now that we've got this here, we've got index.js, a basic user details, and we're going to copy in this whole component here from the top to the bottom. So I'm going to also grab the props here and I'm going to replace from here to there with this section here. Now we obviously are missing some things such as use styles. So we'll grab this one over. And now we're missing make styles. So I'm going to grab this part here and I'm going to assume that this whole block here is for the top component. In any case, I'm going to put that in here and we're going to see if that works out. So now we'll just first save this. And what I'm going to do is inside of view user, instead of having this whole component here, I'm going to import user details and see if it works. And if there are any dependencies which are missing, which would not be surprising, then we can look at putting those in later. So firstly, we're going to do uh, import user details from user details. We'll grab this part here. And instead of using the view user component inside of here, we are going to pass in user details, user equals user info. So now that we've done that, let's go back onto Google Chrome and you'll notice that our page is breaking, which is fine. So now we're going to have a look here and it says that list item is not defined. So we're going to grab a list item from here and we're going to put it into here as well. And let's save and have another look. And it says that list item text is not defined. Um, usually this would be quite a fair bit easier if we had ESLint or something enabled, but in this case, we do not have that luxury. So It does seem we do have ESLint, but for some reason, it just doesn't seem to be uh, showing these imports here. So now you see our component is still rendering just fine. So that's perfect. So we essentially moved our component, which was originally here inside of view user into a separate component into user details. Now it does seem we're not using grid and we're not using circular progress. So we can get rid of those two. It does seem we are using these. So the ESLint just seems to be behaving really weirdly for some weird reason. Now this seems to be working fine. And what I'm going to do now is refactor this so that we can move the functionality that is currently being supported by the user component into view user whilst removing the existing code here. So I'm going to grab this grid down here. I'm going to copy that. And what I'm going to do is comment out this whole section here and then rebuild it. So I'm going to do that real quick. And we're going to do const view user is equal to, and this is just going to be a really simple component for now. Let's just do something like that. And then export default view user like that. So now once we do this, you'll notice that we don't need a lot of these imports here. Um, instead of the return being like this, actually, let's just paste in our grid container. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to import use JSON placeholder again. So import use JSON placeholder from hash helpers 
slash use JSON placeholder. So now that we've got this, we can use this to do our data fetching. Uh, but first and foremost, let's see which actual components we need to use here so we can fix up our imports. We're using grid, we're using circular progress and log list uh, comes from this part here. So we've got these two here and we don't need any of these ones from material UI, nor do we need any of these ones. So now let's grab this and reorder these imports real quickly. So now that we have this, we can actually probably also remove this import here for the action and also this one for React Redux. Uh, we're going to grab this use JSON placeholder, go here, and we're going to do const data and loading is equal to use JSON placeholder and then the path. So the path we're going to specify here is found inside of actions index.js. So specifically when we're fetching a user, we're going to be doing forward slash users forward slash ID, and that's how we fetch the user. So here we're going to write, uh, in backtease here, forward slash users, forward slash, and then we actually do get user ID passed in. Uh, you can tell here on the user component that we are using user ID from params. So the way that we do this is we go up here and inside of the props, we do curly braces, match, and then params, and then user ID. And this is essentially the same thing. So now that we have access to this, you would remember that inside of username here, we do something similar as well, which is we get this information and we also memoize it. So because this information isn't really going to change much, it is a good idea to memoize it here on the page. So we're going to do memoize true and then path users user ID. So now we have the data and the loading uh, from this. And essentially if it is loading, we're going to be showing circular progress. Otherwise we will be showing user details. So in order to do that, let's change this one here to loading. If loading, then we show circular progress. Otherwise we show user details, user is equal to, and we can write user here. So we can put user into this one here. And the other one that we need is use JSON placeholder to fetch the blogs. So in order to fetch blogs for a particular user, we do JSON placeholder dot get forward slash posts question mark user ID equals the ID. So we go here and write forward slash posts question mark user ID is equal to user ID. And if we want, we can choose to memoize this as well. Uh, I think it is pretty nice. So we're going to keep that here. Now that we have two loading constants, it's a good idea to rename this one to user loading. And maybe we can rename this one to blogs loading because remember we are calling these ones blogs not posts, this is only from the path here. So this one here would be user blogs. And then we can write uh, for consistency, I guess we can write user blogs loading here as well. So now inside of here, what we can do is we can actually make this circular progress up here uh, if either one of these is loading. So we can do return user loading or user blogs loading. And in that case, we would show the loader. Otherwise we would show this grid container here. And then here, instead of doing this, we can just show user details. And then we have our blog list, which shows user blogs. So now if I save this and figure out why it isn't working here, I need to put another curly brace there and now our code is formatted properly. And let's see if this works. So now you notice I have a single loader up there and then this information appears on the page. If I click back to the original page here, and then now I click on Leanne Graham, you'll notice that it does not do another load because both of these bits of information have been memoized. If I were to comment this line out and also comment this line out here, you'll notice what happens is even though this page loads and I go here and then I come back here, it's going to load again. So you see how I go back and then I come back here and it loads one more time. So that's why having memoization on your page can really help as well. And that's why it's also really great to build it into the use JSON placeholder hook here. So just to explain this hook in a little bit more detail, what we're going to do is look at this hook here. Now, this is the way I differentiate between a hook and a component because this was a question that came up. Lucas, what is the difference between a hook and a component? Both of them can use use effect and also like use state inside of them. Um, and, and like what exactly is a hook here and like why do we use use JSON placeholder? Well, what's going on here is we are using use JSON placeholder inside of, for example, username. Now username is a component. The reason it's a component is because it returns a React element. This is a React element. It can also return null, which is technically a valid React element as well. If it returns that kind of stuff, then it is a component. Use JSON placeholder is not a component, it is a hook. Now there are two reasons for that. Number one reason is that we are naming it to be a hook. Notice how the first letter is lowercase and the first word here is also use. So this is something which differentiates hooks, which is that the first word in the name of the hook should always be use. This is React convention, for example, use state, use effect, use ref, use JSON placeholder, so on and so forth. So even with custom hooks, we should respect that naming convention. The second reason is because our hook does not return a React element. It does not return something which can be rendered onto the page. In this case here, it returns an object and specifically it returns data, which we can then use in our component. So why do we have a hook here and why are we using user effect inside of here? Well, basically put, 
by having custom hooks, we can take the existing functionality of hooks. For example, uh, the power of use state to store data relevant to your component, the power of use effect to do side effect changes based upon this data and based upon your component. And we're taking all of these and almost combining them into a more powerful Frankenstein type hook that we've designed ourselves. So we take use state, we take use effect, and we essentially build out this whole part here, which allows us to go beyond the basic functionality that React hooks provide and build something which is customized. And specifically in this case, for fetching data from the JSON placeholder API and also supporting memoization. So that's essentially what the purpose of this hook here is to take a little bit of functionality, which we would have originally needed to write uh, quite a few times across our code base, modularize it, put it all in one place, but still make it usable inside of components in a way that actually interacts with each component's lifecycle. So that's the benefit between using a hook and just using a plain old function. Uh, well, technically hooks themselves are just functions, but they do have access to React information. For example, they can detect component mount by using use effect uh, with empty square brackets. They can detect unmount by using uh, a return callback function here. Uh, they can store state variables inside of here and so on and so forth. So they have additional power granted to them by the fact that they are used in a particular way inside of React. So that's the power of using something like this is that if you just use a regular function, like say for example, fetch data from somewhere, uh, and then we do const data loading, uh, the loading value here would never get updated unless inside of fetch data from somewhere, you are using a hook you are using use state or you're using use effect, most likely a combination of the two. Then what we have to do is we have to depend upon the React lifecycle in order to return the data that we're looking for. So I hope that answers your question uh, with regards to hooks and how they work and why we need to use them and how they differ from functional components and also how they differ from normal functions. They're basically just supercharged functions that work well with React and they're also not components simply because they're not designed to be rendered. They're designed to be used with other components to provide additional functionality. So this is the view user component here. I would believe that the current design is really, really cool. And we've done it in just 56 lines of code. Actually, even less if we remove this part here, which we don't use. So that's only 50 lines of code just to confirm it is still working just fine. So now that we've finished refactoring all of this bit of code here, there's only one last thing to do. And to me, that is probably the most satisfying thing here. We are going to go into our index.js and we are going to remove this whole bit here. We are going to remove this line and we are going to remove that line. We're going to remove this. We are going to remove this and that as well. We're going to remove all of that and we're going to delete the reducers directory and we're going to delete actions here as well. Now, after deleting all of this, I'm going to open up the terminal and rerun it to see if it does give any errors because you obviously don't want to do that if it breaks. So it seems that it's not breaking, which is great because it means that we've successfully unlinked our application from the original Redux bindings that we had. So now that we've got this, let's have a look at our page and make sure it's still working. It does seem to have broken, which means we might have a few little things here and there. We do not have the store in which component here. Let's have a look and see which component we're working with. So we can just do a quick search for connect. And it seems we're still using it inside a blog item. What are we using it for? Current user, absolutely nothing. So now we can get rid of this and instead just write export default blog item. I'm going to get rid of this line here and hopefully it works just dandy fine. So this is working just fine. The home page is working just fine and the view blog page is working just fine. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this code review series and I hope that you can see now the importance of using Redux properly and the importance of using proper state and data management techniques uh, for your particular React application. This has been Lucas with Better Coding Academy and see you guys later.